Whoa, these guys are hungry. I bet they miss Mia. I can't wait till she's back from Hawaii. I know. Hey, she should bring some fish back for her tank. <laughs> That'd be cool if she could, but it'd never work. These fish are freshwater fish. So? They can still be friends. Sure, but the fish that live in the ocean are saltwater fish. They'd never survive in this freshwater tank. I thought fish just needed water to survive. All fish need water, but different fish need different places and different natural conditions in which to live. Those places and conditions are called a habitat. So the saltwater fish can't survive in the same habitat as the fish in this tank? No, they can't. There are two different kinds of aquatic ecosystems, saltwater and freshwater. Saltwater fish live in the ocean. The ocean is a saltwater ecosystem. This tank is a freshwater ecosystem. Ponds, swamps, and bogs are freshwater ecosystems. I never knew there was a difference. The main difference between aquatic ecosystems is salt. Freshwater ecosystems are not salty. Well, freshwater has a tiny bit of salt, but not enough to make a difference. Creatures like snails, worms, and frogs live in freshwater. Plants like cattails and arrowheads grow there too. Sounds like the swamp behind my house. Saltwater fish are so much cooler. Mia sent me a pic of one, and it was bright pink like your guitar. It had black tiger stripes and blue fins. Saltwater fish are a lot different than freshwater fish, and so is their saltwater ecosystem. It's very salty and has different habitats or zones where different organisms live. Like a deep end and a shallow end? Hmm, kinda. There are three habitats or zones, intertidal, open ocean upper region, and open ocean lower region. Different organisms live in these different zones. The shallow end is the intertidal. This is where the tide comes in and out and is the top part of the water. Crabs, mussels, and barnacles live in this zone. So do plankton. Plankton? Plankton are organisms that float on water. They're very small, but very important. They make oxygen. What about the other zones? Below the intertidal zone is the open ocean upper region. This is where most of the fish you know live, along with turtles, whales, and sharks. These are all called nectin. Nectin are organisms that float in water. And then there's the bottom. Right. The open ocean lower region is the darkest, coldest zone. Down here in the dark, there are even fish that light up. This is where the benthos live. Benthos are bottom dwellers. Eels and shrimp are benthos. Mmm, shrimp. I love benthos for dinner. Deep, Sam. Deep. Well, at least now I know the difference between saltwater and freshwater ecosystems. Saltwater ecosystems are very salty, and freshwater ecosystems are not as salty. There are different habitats in aquatic ecosystems. Each habitat is unique and is a home to different organisms. And no matter how cool they are, saltwater fish can't live in a freshwater tank. I know. Hmm. Maybe I can paint me as fish. Think she'd notice? Sam, don't even think about it. <laughs> Good day learners, this is Easy Engineering. For today's topic, we're going to talk about the freshwater ecosystem. Fishing. Who doesn't like fishing? The peaceful environment and the excitement of hooking a fish. But while you're waiting, you can see other things. The flowing water in the river, the chirping of the insects, and the interaction of small animals. And these are the things we see in a freshwater ecosystem. Freshwater ecosystems include streams, rivers, lakes, and ponds that have water and are surrounded by land. So the ocean doesn't count, and for another reason, it's very salty and not a touch of freshness at all. These waters move as rain comes and snow dries up. With melting snow, lakes and rivers are supplied. You may notice that when snow dries up, it becomes water and in this case a fresh water. Now let's talk about streams and rivers. The water in streams and the rivers are always moving. That's why it oftentimes called lotek. Sometimes the rain from the mountains are carried by rivers to the sea and with its flow is lots of minerals and fresh filtered waters by the rocks. There are many rivers that are considered major rivers in the world. 
And talking about rivers, did you know that the largest river in the world is the Nile River in Egypt? By largest, meaning the longest, of course. But if we're talking about the largest volume, then it would be the Amazon River, where some monster fishes are found. So let's talk about lakes and ponds. Lakes and ponds are sometimes called lentic because they have waters that stand still or not flowing. A pond may just be a very small lake but a lot of animals lives there, mostly for the grasses that grow below and the comfort. And there are four different types of lake zones. First is the littoral zone. It is the area that is close to the shore of the lake and this is where the plants grow. Its opposite is the limnetic zone where it is far from the shore. The euphotic zone is the layer of water right below the surface. That means it's below the ground we're stepping on. But there is still enough sunlight to reach this area for some photosynthesis to happen. And lastly, the benthic zone. It is the bottom of the lake or pond. The deeper part of the lake, the cooler part, since the sunshine that warms the water is less in the deep. Fun fact learners, did you know that the largest lake that covers the land is the Caspian Sea? Yes, you heard it right, sea, but technically it is a lake since it is surrounded by land and it is salty too. Nevertheless, it is as big as a sea, that's why it's called Caspian Sea. Now let's go to the plants and animals of the fresh water. Plants and algae are very important to fresh water because they provide food for the other animals and give off oxygen. In fact, that green and slimy scum or layer of dirt you can find on the surface of a pond or lake is freshwater algae and is the yummy food for some aquatic animals. In fast-flowing streams and rivers, the freshwater weeds and other plants have unique structures that keep them holding on to overcome the very strong water. Specifically, they have strong roots that keep them secure, like some mosses that cling to rocks tightly and stems that bend easily and go with the flow of the water. On the other hand, plants in still water, like ponds, just chill and stay still. These are the water lilies, algae, and duckweed that float on the surface. Cattails and reeds can also be found along the shore of the lakes or ponds. Estuaries are home to plants that survive in the fresh waters as well as the salt water. Some of these plants are the mangroves and pickleweed. Fun fact learners, did you know that the largest water lily in the world is the Victoria Amazonica? It looks like a very large plate and sometimes frogs just hop on it to chill. By its name, it's found in the Amazon River. Speaking of frogs, they are freshwater animals and cannot survive long on salt water. Many animals live in freshwater ecosystems. Like plants, they adapt too to survive the moving waters. Some may have suction cup-like structures on their bodies just to stick to rocks. There are lots of fishes, birds, insects, amphibians, and crustaceans that make freshwater biomes their home. One example is the trout, and we love to fish for them, and they become meals for other animals as well. Fishes like trout and salmons eat insects and plants that go their way. Salmons often just jump out of the water for migration, and bears just love catching them. Estuaries are also rich in animal life and are often a protected area for some creatures. Some animals like clams, shrimp, and lots of fish also live here. So learners, that's all of it for this topic, freshwater ecosystem. That is all for now. I hope you learned something today. Have a nice day. Good day learners, this is Easy Engineering. For today's topic, we're going to talk about the marine ecosystem. 
Have you ever dreamed about traveling inside a submarine? Diving from the sea level to the deep ocean where you could no longer see the shine of the sun and you could only see what lies below. What do you think exists there? Let's dive in and find out. There is a system in the ocean where plants and animals live harmonically in a place and that is called the marine ecosystems. The marine ecosystem or the ocean is an area of salty water that covers most of the earth's surface and there are millions of different plants and animals living inside. There are five oceans around the world, the Arctic, Atlantic, Indian, Pacific, and Southern Oceans. Fun fact learners, did you know that the Mariana Trench is the deepest part of the ocean? In fact, it is equivalent to how tall the Mount Everest is. Now there are small organisms and bacteria found in the ocean, seas, bays, and inlets that make up part of the creatures that live in the marine ecosystem. There are three main layers of the ocean based on how deep it is. First is the euphotic or the surface zone. In this zone, sunlight can penetrate or can be seen throughout and the water is warm. Most plants and animals live here. Second is the despotic or the twilight zone. This zone gets some sunlight but not enough for plants to, to survive. And the third zone is the apotic zone where there is no sunlight at all. The darkest side of the ocean where unknown creatures could be lurking. Plants serve a very important purpose in the life of animals. But did you know that plants can also grow underwater? Some examples of marine plants are the seaweeds, marine algae, and sea grasses. On the other hand, mangrove trees, which live on tropical shores, are also part of the ocean ecosystem. These plants absorb carbon dioxide in exchange, they give up oxygen for animals to breathe in. Marine plants live in the top or euphotic zone of the ocean because they need sunlight to create food through photosynthesis. Kelp is a famous type of algae and it provides food and shelter to ocean animals. Did you know that it is even used by humans in things like ice cream and toothpaste? Phytoplankton are tiny plants in the ocean that serve as the food for many ocean creatures like smallest fish and even the largest of whales. Speaking of animals, what animals found in the marine ecosystem? I'm sure there are lots and lots of them that we couldn't even count since the ocean is vastly wide. The ocean consists of a large variety of animal life including fish, mollusks, dolphins, seals, walruses, whales, crustaceans, bacteria, sea animals, and many others. Fun fact learners, did you know that the largest animal in the sea is the blue whale? It averages up to 7.6 meters long at birth and weighs about 3 tons. As an adult, it can easily stretch to the length of a city bus and weigh close to 200 tons. Now back to the topic. Most marine animals stay in euphotic and dysphotic zones where they have access to plants and other ocean animals to eat. But deep down below the layers, there is life too and they might look weirdest animals on earth. One example is the angler fish. Fishes like this adapt to the darkest side of the ocean. In fact, the angler fish creates its own light to lure their prey. And when it is close, the angler fish just gobbles it up in a blink of an eye. We humans use the ocean a lot, whether it's for food, medicines, oil, other resources, or just for recreation like swimming and parties. Either way, we love the things that the ocean gives us. But the demand for resources from the ocean can be destructive to the marine ecosystems. Around the world, bad fishing practices like poisoning and using dynamite to catch fish also kills other animals like corals and small fishes. Overfishing popular species and endangered species are prohibited by law. But some people still do it. Pollution is also harming the marine ecosystem. 
pollutants such as fertilizers and household products and even oil spills ruin the beauty of the ocean. For us, there are many simple things that you can do to help protect the ocean, like recycling and making sure that chemicals don't go down your household drains is an easy way to start. Don't throw your garbage into the ocean because fishes eat it and be poisoned with it. So learners, now we've learned important things about the ocean. And that's it. That is all for now. I hope you learned something today. Okay children, that is it for today. I hope you have followed it. If you have any doubts, you can contact me through my number. Message me through WhatsApp number. Uh, keep yourself safe, healthy and also study well children. Bye.